we are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. We are at anchor and at this moment we had 32 wind and it's like constantly above 20 knots and the wind is howling. We are here in South Lake Bay. We just had to put out more scope because the wind just picked up quite a lot and we've got our new solar panels. Oops. But yeah, it is gruesome. And I think we need a new chain. Check that out. And that is when we anchored in Italy in that volcano where the champagne bottles were. That's when the chain got a big, I think all the sulfuric acid just chowed off all the galvanizing. And then we flipped it around um, end to end. But this is now the bad end. So we now in 10 meters here in South Lake, it's pretty deep. Um, that's why there's not so many boats here. But yeah, 10 meters means we need to put out at least 30 meters. But with this wind, we're sitting now at 60 meters. So that was a long time ago, eh? That we did 60 meters. And now we can see how rusty the chain is. So it is time for us to get a new chain. And what happens, you can even see here, yeah, it, it doesn't want to, to kink. It actually rusted together. <laughs> so a new chain, it is <laughs> another thousand or two thousand dollars crazy this is in south lake it's basically hollywood over there is that big hollywood roundabout and we've got this huge oh it's a lagoon but it's big and i think he's in the same trouble than us um, you need to put out more scope because we are definitely closer now to that one but okay we did put out 10 more uh, meters so hopefully we now almost one to almost one to six but if we drag again we'll just put up more scope but we're pretty close but I have a feeling those guys are also moving they need to watch they need to watch so we have a uh a monohull um, that's obviously got no anchor on and it came drifting all the way from there and the wind is pumping chain broke loose chain broke loose looks like the people are trying to put fenders out now this is just like a stowaway boat, shit. And people are just swimming and climbing into the water. Wow. This is teamwork. Oh, there's another boat coming. Well, it looks like the chap on the boat knows what he's doing. Well, he knows his way around the boat. We've got tippics in the water for in case. And that guy's just holding the rope in his hand. Yeah, he, I don't know how he's going to do sure that. that's going to work. He needs to, but he cannot clear it off, but yeah. yeah. But just bump the side, I think, softly. But what then? And there's some yellow stickers on the boat. What does that mean? Well, it, on both sides there's yellow stickers, so I'm not sure whether the government... It's contaminated or...? No, I don't know. 
Maybe it just says it's a derelict or oh. maybe a notice of eviction, I don't know. And there was a ski boat coming around, round and around, and I just caused major, major wakes. And I wonder if that was not the final straw for that anchor chain. Or that it broke. It comes from that other anchorage. I think I saw that boat with the yellow stickers. Just when you come out of the bridge, there's oh. an anchorage there. You think so it drifted all the way here? Yeah, it came all the way from there. You're right. You said earlier on that looks familiar. So it came all the way down the canal yep. the on the interstate. In. What, what, what do you call this? The intercoastal? ICW. ICW? And oh, then it blew in here. Bravo to these guys, eh? It is a crime in Florida to take an abandoned vessel without first getting title to it. And that investigation process usually takes about 45 to 120 days or longer. The cost associated with this investigation is usually between three and six hundred dollars. But that can vary as well depending on the requirements. And this is now the problem with the... What is the government going to do with that boat? <laughs> That's the issue with liverboard boats. And between all this commotion, we've got dolphins in the bay. Right off, frolicking. Here they come. Oh, they're going to be right here. <laughs> this is so cool. Okay, so this guy is now towing them. Don't know where to. And I think that guy behind the wheel is now the proud owner of this derelict boat. There's a, a mooring fender, you can't call it a mooring ball. And the guy in the, in the speed rubber duck checked it out to see if it was sturdy enough. And it looks, fender. <laughs> it looks like they're going to tie it onto there. Shame, is he going to jump in again? Yep. That guy's working hard for his, <laughs> his salvage. He deserves that boat no. through and through. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's see another. Against their own boat. And after all of that wind, it is so nice, peaceful and quiet. You see the all the clouds in the sky, in the water. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm not sure you guys can see this, but we are almost in a gale here. It's like. 17 knots of wind, 22 apparent, and goes up to 25 apparent, there you see. And already the main is, oh, you cannot see this either. So the main is reefed. So we reefed the main, we also reefed the Genoa, but the Genoa is not happy. It's a huge noise and I see some lightning there in the background and we are actually crossing um, just past Bermimi and we're on our way to the Berry Islands to Chapki to check in so it's crazy it's a big front coming as well so the sun is about to rise if you can see Sisu is jumping it is not happiness around here. We have wind that now it's okay, it's now at 18, 17 knots. Um, but the apparent wind uh, earlier went up to about 30 knots. So we, we had a lot of wind. And on that side, oh, okay. There's a front coming, the lightning is there, so 
and that means the wind will come from the back it will start swinging but the waves also need to swing and that's going to take a while so I double reefed both the sails the main and the, and the Genoa so I think that front is on us look at that But, so, all the reef, you cannot see it from here, but we are reef 2 on both sails, double reef, so let's see if we are okay. So the wind is going to, it's now currently from somewhere there, <laughs> somewhere there, in front of us, and because of our earth, because of our speed, the apparent wind is somewhere there, but now it's going to move, shift all the way to the back. So I'm not too worried about the reef, um, because we can run, we can run in that direction, kind of like infinity. So we can run with the, with the weather quite far, and you can see the radar is already picking it up, it's very close, two miles. Um, but yeah, so I'm not too worried that that we will have too much pressure. So the apparent wind, this moment is 18, but I don't see that that one is going to go too much higher. Because now it is quite high because the wind is from this direction, but the moment it moves to the back, then yeah, we will be pushed by the wind. You can see the rain is here, and that's the reef second reef. I still have a third reef as well. I haven't needed that one yet. But hopefully not today. <laughs> you can see that one, the Genoa is on the sticker. That is the second reef. Uh, end of the day, just a lot of rain. So I've got now the main still reef on wing on wing with the Genoa, which is now fully open and the wind speed is 16, 15 but you can see now the apparent wind drop as we go faster this one will drop so it's not much that can go wrong if you go basically dead downwind but yeah it's raining again oh no it's I must maybe bring the whole main out so the main can get washed as well Oh, maybe that's not a bad idea. We are anchored here at Morgan's Bluff on Andros Island Group in Bahamas. And all the activities is in that little harbor there for this area. And a couple of dead ships. There's another dead ship. We've got a few neighbors here. But the thing I want to show you guys is if there's rocks on, on the shore, then you know there's not a lot of sand. There's a little bit of sand, so that beach is good. So but there's rocks there again. And it means this whole area is actually just rocks. Not so good. We anchored as well. It looks like in kind of like rocky shoaling territory we are trying to clear in here at Andros something creek and this is the <laughs> Obermaster little house uh, and Topics is somewhere over there just behind the white boat there is a little dinghy dock over there and yeah they have to call I have to call immigration and we are just waiting here and this is actually where all the goods is coming in as well check all the goods they're standing low so if you bring in wine it will also be there we just left Morgan's Bluff on Andros Island that is Andros Island over there hmm. 
Not sure you guys can see it, but that's Andros Island. First time that we visited the island. What's well, a very yeah, bear, 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 bear harbor. Uh, I would not say. <laughs> but as you can see, we're doing downwind sailing. Look at the waves coming from the back. We've got the Cote up and the Genoa. Always nice to see the big sail flying. And the sun is out. It is still chilly, but the sun is out. Patreons on board who wanted to learn more about how to sail a catamaran. We picked them up in Georgetown, sailed all the way up to Staniel Key, where everybody had fun with the swimming pigs, and of course Thunderbolt Grotto. Line dance moves were exchanged and islands explored. Then we worked our way back down to Georgetown again. Fond memories and great friends were made for all.